Well, hello and welcome to our webinar today on Marvelous Moat Activities for Schools. So excited to have everybody here with us today. Before we dive on into this, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping to make sure everybody can participate. Uh, first of all, this is being live streamed on YouTube and we do have the chat feature turned on. So those that are participating live today, please feel free to use the uh, chat feature in YouTube. I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, as we uh, uh, go through the session today to see if um, there's any questions or comments that uh, we need to uh, address. So please feel free to do that. Um, as far as accessing uh, the resources for our session today, here, let me get my uh, my video out of the way there for a sec, so you guys can actually see the link at the top. Uh, we do have a uh, session resource document that can be found at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat. Uh, that will get you into a Google document that will allow you to be able to follow along with everything that we're taking a look at here today. Uh, lots of uh, links and resources in that document. Uh, the document looks like this. Uh, so if you're getting into that, document, you are in the right place. Again, that is bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moot. Um, while you guys are taking a moment to uh, pull that up, let me go ahead and do a little bit of a quick introduction here. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. My name is Eric Kurtz. I am a technology integration specialist here in Northeast Ohio. This is my 30th year in education. Started off as a middle school math teacher, taught that for seven years, and then moved into a role as a tech coach or a tech integrationist. And that's what I currently do. I work for uh, the Stark Portage Area Computer Consortium, or SPARC for short, here in Northeast Ohio, supporting about 35 school districts. Uh, we do have our uh, tech integration resource page uh, that can be found at uh, ti.apps.spark.org, where we share uh, lots of our tech integration resources there. I also help run the GEG Ohio, the Google Educator Group of Ohio, which you can find at bit.ly slash GEG Ohio, uh, where we have monthly meetings where we talk about the latest news in Google for Education and uh, share great ideas and answer questions related to using Google tools in schools, encourage people to connect. Even if you're not from Ohio, we're happy to have anybody join us in that. Um, and then I'm also um, a Google certified trainer an innovator. And so on the side, I do run a website called controlaltachieve.com. If you're not familiar with that site, I'd encourage you to check it out when you get some time. That's where I share um, a lot of my uh, training videos and resources and projects and templates and lots of things like that. Uh, so uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of info about who I am. As far as today, though, what we're going to be taking a look at is an awesome tool called Moat. Um, and here is our plan for today. We're going to start off uh, with a quick overview of what Moat is, in case you're not familiar with it, and then very quickly talk about how you can install it and set it up if you haven't done so already. Most of our time, though, today is going to be spent on what can we do with this tool. So we're going to be looking at using Moat inside of docs and slides and forms and classroom and lots of other tools like that. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the premium features involved in it um, and then uh, wrap up with some more resources at the end. Uh, speaking of which, if you hang out to the end of the session, I do have a few links and things that will be uh, pulling up at the end of the session. One is if you would like to get a certificate of completion for this webinar. I'm estimating this will be a one-hour webinar. Um, and so for a one-hour uh, um, PD certificate, uh, I will have a link and a code to give to you at the end of the session that you can use to go in, fill that out, and it will automatically generate a uh, PDF uh, and send that to you for your certificate for those who would like to get such a certificate. And then also, the folks at Moat have been so nice today. They have provided us with a code uh, or a link uh, to get a free upgrade on the unlimited version of Moat that will give you the unlimited version through the end of June. And I'll be sharing that at the end of the session as well. So be sure to hang out for all of that stuff. Um, and then just as a reminder, I know we said it at the beginning, but we'll mention again in case some people have just joined us or if you haven't got a chance to pull it up yet, all of the resources can be found um, at bit.ly 
slash Kurtz dash moat. That'll get you to a Google document. Feel free to make a copy of that document or save it to your drive or bookmark it as needed, whatever works best for you. But that document has all of the resources we're going to be taking a look at, including some links. If you want to try some of these activities out here today, you'll be able to follow along as we work through all of this great content here today. Awesome. Looks great. Well, with all of that said, let's go ahead and get on into our session. Again, if you do have questions, uh, do throw those in the chat. I'll do my best <laughs> to look over at the chat every now and then and see if there's a question in there to, to address. If I miss something, please feel free to uh, help each other out. If you have an answer to a question somebody asks in the chat, please feel free to throw those answers in there as well. All right, let's get on into this, guys. So first of all, what is Moat? What is this tool we're going to be talking about here today? So Moat is a Chrome web extension. You're probably familiar with extensions, but if for any reason you're not, uh, keep in mind extensions are tools that you install in Chrome to get extra features you wouldn't normally have. And when you install them, they put little icons way up in the top right-hand corner of your browser. You can see I've got a couple of extensions. I got like Mercury Reader and Extensity, and well, I've got Moat installed up in the top corner. And so you can install extensions for uh, Macs, PCs, Chromebooks, and then it gives you these additional features you don't normally have. Well, in the case of Moat, the feature it gives you is the ability to record your voice and then add that recording into all kinds of stuff. You can insert it into Google Documents and slideshows and forms and Google Classroom and Gmail and so much more. Pretty much just about anything online. <laughs> there's, a, there's a box you can put a link, you can put your voice in there with Moat. It's awesome. It also allows you to view engagement details to see uh, who has listened to uh, your, uh, your recordings. And there are uh, some premium features um, as well as the free version that we're going to be primarily taking a look at here. There's also some premium features that have some additional things, and we'll, we'll touch on those nearer to the end, like transcription and translation and STEM mode and so forth. Now, since I've just mentioned premium features and a free version, we probably shouldn't talk really quick about pricing and how all that works. And so uh, there is a, a wonderful free version of Moat. Um, and uh, pretty much everything I'm going to be showing you for the majority of this session would be what would fall under the free version closer to the end of the webinar. I'll talk about some of the unlimited features, as they're called. Uh, but the free version allows you to rec record a Moat anywhere. You've got all of the features of being able to record the Moat and put it into you know, classroom and slides and docs and sheets and so forth. Um, there is a limit on how long the recordings can be, and that is 30 seconds, which is still quite a lot of time because what we're wanting to do, again, is just to be able to give some feedback or to give you know some audio support, um, and 30 seconds is a good amount of time to do that. The other limitation on the free version is 20 recordings per month, so you want to be thoughtful about how you use uh, those 20 recordings throughout the month. That's all part of the free version, no cost whatsoever for that. Same for your students, so it's not you know something just for teachers. Same thing for your students. They also could use the free version, 30 seconds at a time for 20 recordings per month. Uh, there is a paid version if you are um, wanting to do that, which gives you um, a longer recording, uh, three minutes uh, worth of recording per, per recording and unlimited amounts of recordings. And then you pick up some of these additional things like transcription and translation and so forth. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And there's also options for an entire school district if you want to purchase it for you know a whole school um, so that there's bulk discount on the pricing for that. And again, like I did mention at the end of the session, I do have a link for you that'll let you be able to use the unlimited version uh, for free uh, through the end of June. And so you'll get about a good four months uh, almost of usage of that to really take it for a spin. And we'll talk about that at the very end. All right. So that gives you a little bit of idea of what Moat is and the different options for it as far as pricing goes. Um, let's talk about getting it installed and set up. Now, if you've already got it installed, fantastic. We may have some folks watching today, though, that this is new to you and you haven't had a chance to uh, try this out before. So I'm going to very quickly show you how the installation works. I've already got it installed on this account. So I'm going to pull another 
account, another profile over onto the screen here and show you the installation really quick so you see how it works. But basically what it comes down to is you're going to need to go out to the Chrome Web Store. And in the Chrome Web Store, you can find all kinds of wonderful extensions. Well, Moat is one of them. Now, if you're following along in the agenda document, the link is conveniently in there for you. So we've talked about what is Moat. We've talked about the uh, different versions. Uh, we're now on page three of the agenda document, and you'll see one of the first links on there is to install the Moat Chrome extension. And I have a link directly to the Chrome Web Store to save you time get you right out there so you can install it. Now, what we're going to do is on a different account, we're going to go ahead and do a quick installation of it and then run through the setup. Now, the setup will depend upon, you know, if, you, if you're a student or a teacher, you'll get different questions depending upon how you set it up. I'll just enroll that account as a student, which is a pretty quick setup. If you, if you choose that you're a teacher, there'll be a few more questions like, what do you teach? And, and you know, what, what grades and what's the name of your school and, and things like that. Well, let's go ahead and just show you real quick what the setup would look like. So I'm going to pull this other account over onto the screen for just a moment. This is just a demo account that I've got set up, a demo student account. Um, and I've gone to the Chrome Web Store with the uh, link that, again, we have there in the agenda document for you, or you can just always go to the Chrome Web Store and just search for Moat. Pretty quick, pretty easy to find there. Um, if I come here and I click on the Add to Chrome button, that will allow me to install the extension. It's going to ask uh, for uh, permission as we go through this. I'll say, yes, let's go ahead and add the extension. Give that a moment. It's going to download that and install that extension. And there we go. The extension has been installed and now it's going to pop up here and walk us through that initial setup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Google account. Uh, no need to set up anything else. We'll just click on sign in with Google here and I'm using my demo student. So I'll choose my demo student account. It's going to ask for some permissions here. I will agree to all of these permissions and say continue. And then, like I mentioned, there's a little bit of onboarding here where it's going to ask us, you know, a few questions. Again, I'm going to say I'm a student, depending upon what you choose here, you'll get some different questions. I'll just say I'm a student, that I'm under 18, and that I do have permission to uh, use this. And that's it. There we go. Complete my account setup. And simple as that, Moat is installed and ready to go. Now, there is one other thing I'm going to uh, mention here that I think is really helpful after you've gone through the setup, and that is to pin the extensions just so you can find it quicker, because there's a lot of neat things you're going to want to do with Moat, and sometimes clicking on the extensions the easiest way to do it. Well, when you install extensions in Chrome, they go up in the top right, but by default, they get hidden after you've installed them. And so what you can do is you can click on that little gray puzzle piece icon in the top right corner of Chrome where your extensions are, and that'll show you all the extensions. Then using the little blue pin, you can pin the ones that you want to see and keep out there. So if I bring that account back up again here, um, if you notice, if I come back over to, I'll just, uh, uh, I guess it's fine. Let's go over to classroom here. If I come up and I click on the little uh, gray puzzle piece in the top right, uh, you'll see that here's a list of all my extensions and Moat uh, does not have the little pin uh, filled in at the moment. I'm going to click on the pin and there we go. Now it is pinned and I'll be able to come up here anytime I need, give a click on the Moat extension and have access to it. Now notice the very first time I clicked on it, it also asked me if does, you know, can it have permission to use my microphone? So of course I'll say allow. And you may get that now and then. It may be little pop-ups where it asks for some permissions. You can just allow those as need be. All right, guys. Good job. There we go. We've got it all set up and we're ready to get moving. So with that installed, what we're going to do now is really spend the rest of our time talking about so what would we do with Moat? Um, and so for the pretty much the whole rest of the session, it's going to be lots of different ideas on how we can use Moat in a school setting. So starting here, um, in the middle of page three, we're going to talk about using Moat in Google Docs, do a couple examples there, then Google Slides, then we're going to jump to Google Forms, and then Google Classroom, and then we'll talk about things like viewing the activity on your re on your recordings, as well as some of the premium or unlimited features at the bottom there. So if you would like to just watch, that's totally fine. If you want to try some of these things while I'm talking about them, um, all of this is in our agenda document, which again, just as a reminder to you, uh, if anybody uh, still needs to pull that up, bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat, that'll get you into that resource document. Um, and I will... Uh, 
uh, be pulling things from there as we go. I've got links in here to sample documents. If you want to try these, you do not need to. You can just, you know, create your own. That's totally fine. But if you did want to try any of these that I'll be using here, uh, you can do that. All right. And I'm also going to clean up a couple of tabs on my screen because I end up getting way too many tabs open <laughs> while I'm doing this. So we'll do a quick little cleanup there. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and start into our usage of Moat. And we're going to begin with Google Docs. So when we're using Moat in Google Docs, there's a lot of things we can do with it. One of the most common uses, uses for Moat is to leave recorded audio feedback for our students. So if a student has turned in, you know, a report and we're wanting to give them some feedback rather than just typing up a text comment for them, we can personalize it. We can record our voice and then the student can hear what we have to say to them right there in their Google document. So let's start off with the most, you know, the most common, the most basic use of a uh, moat in a Google document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this sample document. Again, you don't have to open these up. I have the links in here. If you want to try this out along with me, uh, and I'll be using them from the document here. So I've got a, a link here to a pretend George Washington report. And let's say that I want to go ahead and uh, leave some feedback for my student on this report. Now, I've intentionally made some errors in this. There are some spelling errors that are intentional and some grammar errors and so forth in here. And let's say that I wanted to tell my student to watch out for spelling errors. So here you can see the word commander was spelled wrong. So if I were to come in here and select the word commander, I could now come over to the um, little floating toolbar on the right here in Google Docs. And this is just the normal toolbar that we get where there's the option to add a comment. Nothing special about that. We've always had that. That's just a normal Google Docs feature. Come over here and click on add comment. And I could just type up my comment as normal if I, if I wanted to. But notice what's different. Because I have Moat installed, I now have this little Moat icon that's popping up in my comment box here. Uh, it won't be there if you don't have the extension installed, but if you've got it installed, you'll notice this popping up in there. All I have to do is click once to start recording, click again to stop, and there we go. It's going to record my voice and add that recording in as a comment for the student. So we'll try that out. Let's give that a spin here. Watch out for spelling errors. And there's the recording. I'm going to click comment. Give that just a moment. And there it is. So now when the student would open up this document, if I were to turn it through classroom or whatever the case might be, they'd say, oh, Mr. Kurtz left me some feedback. And they could come over here and say, oh, what's this? And there's a little play button. They would just click on the play button. Watch out for spelling errors. And there they go. They would hear that recording rather than just reading a text comment that I've left for them. Now, if the student has Moat installed, this is exactly what it's going to look like. They're going to go into their document. They're going to see that I've left a comment. There's going to be a play button. They're going to click it. It's going to play it. Um, the student does not need um, the, um, you know, the unlimited version of, of Moat to be able to play those back, nor do I need that to record them. Again, with the free version, I can record up to 20 of these per month. But as far as the playback goes, no. It, you know, as long as they've got it installed, they'll see the happy little play button and can, and can play that easily. Now, what if they don't have Moat installed? It's still okay. They still can interact with these. It just looks a little bit different. So let's do this. Let me open this up in a incognito window where my where I don't have the extension installed just to show you what it would look like. So very quickly here, I'm just going to change my sharing permissions on this so that anybody with the link is able to access this. Looks good because I'm going to open this up in an incognito window temporarily just to show you what it would look like if you didn't have the extension installed. So if I were to come along and say, you know, I'm a student who does not have the extension installed, uh, I would still see that there is a comment that's been left here, but instead of the play button, it's going to say click here uh, or click to hear my voice note and there'll be a link. And so what they're going to do is they're going to click on the moat link that's in there. That's going to open up a new tab where they see the happy little play button. Now they can click it. 
watch out for spelling and errors. And there you go. And this is true for pretty much any time you're leaving a moot recording in comments or in a text box, that, that sort of a, uh, of a field. It's just one extra click if they don't have the extension. They would simply need to click once on the link and then they could click the play button. Uh, otherwise, um, if they do have the extension installed, the play button will already be there for them. All right. So I won't demonstrate that the rest of the session. Just be, be aware of that, that as we run through all these other examples, uh, I'll be showing it with Moat installed, but be aware you always do have that option there. Did see a little bit of activity in the chat stream. I want to look over and see if there was a question to address. Um, somebody asked about, um, do our students have to install it to use it? Um, and so, oh, good. So we did kind of address that, that again, they don't need Moat installed to be able to play them back. Um, but if you do install it for the students, then they'll have the happy little button and they also can record their own voice as well. Be aware, most schools probably don't give students free reign to install any extension they want. So this would be something you would have to decide how you would want to roll it out as a district. Your tech administrators can decide to put it in the approved list and then and students can go into the Chrome Web Store and install it, or your tech administrators could decide to just push it out to the students. And that way it would automatically be installed and they'd have access to it that way as well. Very good. Awesome. I'm seeing some good uh, feedback in the chat. So thank you guys for helping each other uh, as well with these questions. I appreciate that. Uh, that is very helpful. Uh, all right. Now, that's the most common use of Moat, you know, recording your voice and adding it as feedback in Google Docs. But there's a lot of other cool things we can do with it. So let's keep going. We're going to stay in Docs. We're just going to dig a little deeper in Docs and talk about some other things we could do with it. So another thing we could do, instead of recording our voice and adding it as feedback over here on the side, as far as comments, we can actually embed our voice as a link directly into the Google document. Uh, we'll call this a hyper moat, uh, kind of like a hyperdoc, but putting a, uh, or putting our voice right inside of there. So I'm going to go back over to our agenda document. I'm going to scroll down to the uh, uh, bottom of page three, top of page four with uh, uh, the uh, topic of doing a hyper moat. And I'm going to open up a sample document here for testing. So give this a moment to make a quick copy. Uh, this is a a hyper doc uh, doesn't have to be, but you know, it is in this case uh, where we've got a bunch of neat activities built into this document. We've got a Google drawing graphic organizer. We've got an embedded video and so forth. Well, let's say that we want to use Moat to add, for example, audio directions. So while a student is filling out their Google document, maybe we want to provide them with a little additional support by allowing them to hear the directions being read aloud to them in our voice. So what I could simply do is take my, uh, take my mouse here, highlight the text where I want to insert the audio directions. And this time, instead of hitting the comment button, look what's right above it. There's a little button that shows a link with the little moat icon. Again, that's there because I've got the moat extension installed. When I click on that, it pops up this little floating moat window and I can move it because I may need to see what it is I'm reading. So you're allowed to move it out of the way. But as soon as I hit the little M to start, I can start recording, click it again to stop. And I could, for example, be reading the directions aloud. Let's try that out. Watch the video below for an introduction to different types of landforms. Double click on the video to open it and then double click it again to play the video. There we go. Once that's done saving that, I'll click insert, give that a moment, and there you go. So now, if I were to make, uh, if I were to push this out to my students, let's say I'm using Google Classroom, I say make a copy for all students. When this gets pushed out to them, they're going to be able to come here, click where it says audio directions, and then just hit play. Watch the video below for an introduction to different types of land. And there you go. We could play the whole thing if we wanted to. And so I could go through this whole document and I could add in audio directions in all these different spots to provide that additional support uh, for my students in there. So that would be one way to use the idea of embedding uh, a uh, 
hypermote right into your document. Um, let's take another twist on this. Another thing we could do with the hypermote is what if we wanted to put some audio in for something that normally wouldn't be good to have typed out, like let's say spelling words, you know, what it was like, you know, a vocab test or a, a translation worksheet or a spelling, you know, worksheet. And we don't actually want the words to be typed up. We want the students to hear the words and then have them type them in. Well, this is a really clever way around that. So let's try that out. I'm going to go back over to our agenda document, come down to example three here on page four, and I'm going to open up this Google document for testing, and it'll make a copy, and you'll see that this is a spelling practice example here. So let me zoom in a bit so we can see it. So the idea behind this one is the students will get a copy of this, and it's going to say, click on the links below to play the audio for each spelling word, and then type in the spelling words. So what I'll do is I'm going to select the text, click to play, and I will use the little hypermote button that pops up on the side, and then I will record myself giving them the spelling word. So let's try that out. Dinosaur. I saw a dinosaur fossil at the museum. Dinosaur. There we go. And once that's recorded, we'll hit insert. And as simple as that, now the student could come here, they could click on that. Dinosaur. I saw a dinosaur fossil at the museum. Dinosaur. And then they could come over here and type in their response. So great way to work around that sort of a situation if we're wanting to have um, vocab words, uh, you know, uh, translation, uh, fluency, things like that, uh, spelling words, being able to have them listen to them rather than having them typed up there. Now, we've been recording ourselves uh, each example here so far. For our final docs example, let's talk about having our students record themselves using a hypermote. So same thing, exact same process using a hypermote. But in this case, we're going to have them practice fluency. So this could be a situation where we want the students to practice reading something aloud. Now, it could be the example we're going to look at is some German fluency. You know, we want them you know, to be able to pronounce, you know, these, these words and to record themselves saying them. But this could also be used with, with, with little ones if you know you're wanting them to read some sample phrases or sentences. And the beauty of this is when the students do this, it's going to record that. You can play it back as many times as you need. If you need to, you know, listen to it more than once, if you need to, you know, play it back for the student, if it was something that you needed to chat with the parents about and say, hey, you know, take take a look at, you know, take a listen to how they're pronouncing this, you would have all of that easily recorded. So let's take a look at that for our final docs example. So so we'll go down to example four here on page four, and here is a link to this German fluency practice. We'll go ahead and make a copy of this and zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. There are directions here for the students on how to do the hypermote. And so let's say I want to record uh, myself saying one of these phrases. I would do what the directions say. I would uh, select the words you're recording. I would click on the hypermote button, and now I would practice saying uh, my, my words. Let's try it out. Guten Morgen. And now that it's recorded, I'll hit insert. It'll drop that in. When the student now submits this to me as a teacher, I can come here and I can click on this. Guten Morgen. And I can hear the recording and, of course, leave feedback for them. All right. So just a couple of quick examples there on how inside of Google Docs, we could use a tool like Moat. We're going to move on to some other tools here. I think we're jumping into slides here next, but wanted to go ahead and uh, uh, pause for a second, looking over again at our uh, chat, seeing some good comments in there. If you guys do have some questions, again, please feel free to throw those in. If I miss a question, if it gets lost in there, again, please feel free to answer questions for each other or put it back in there in case I missed it <laughs> so I can, uh, I can uh, respond to it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean up a couple of my windows here again. I get a few too many tabs up, and we're going to move on to our next topic. So, we looked at Docs. That was awesome. Let's talk about using Moat in Google Slides next. Now, first of all, we absolutely could do the same thing we did in Slides that we did in Docs, which is using Moat to add voice comments in a Google Slideshow. So just like in a Google document, if I'm in a Google Slideshow, I can click insert comment. It'll pop up the comment box over on the side, and it functions very much the same. Now, 
I'm happy to demonstrate that if you'd like to see it. But for the sake of time, I'll just mention that works just like in a document there. Insert comment, record your voice, drop that in there. Great way to be able to leave verbal feedback on a slideshow. What I want to spend a little bit more time on when it comes to slides is the idea of inserting audio into a slideshow. And so that's what we're going to spend a little bit more time on. And so I'm going to open up a sample document or excuse me, sample slideshow. So we're going to go on down to page five. And here we have under example two, a sample slideshow called short and long vowel sounds. I'm going to go ahead and give a click on this Google Slides link to open this one up. Let that make a copy. It'll take it just a moment to make a copy of this. But the idea is that you're allowed to to insert audio into a Google slideshow. And Moot makes it so easy to be able to do this. Now, keep in mind, this is something that Google Slides does have built in the ability to add audio. You just have to jump through quite a few hoops under normal conditions. If you're in a Google slideshow and you go up to the insert menu, there is the option to insert audio, which is great. The thing is, there's not an option to record the audio. It's to insert already existing audio. So if you're doing this without Moat, you certainly can, but you have to record your audio. You have to save the audio to Google Drive. You have to share the audio in Google Drive, and then you can go to insert audio, pick it from your drive, and then drop it into your slideshow. Well, thankfully, Moat <laughs> makes this so much easier. So if you want to add audio, just like you see here, all these little audio buttons, if you want to add audio into a Google Slideshow, all we have to do is go above the slide and we'll see a little Moat icon uh, right above the slide. Give a click on that and look at that. It's our normal friendly Moat window that we can drag around as need be. All we have to do is click on the M to start, click it again to stop, and we can record ourselves giving some feedback or directions or uh, uh, any audio support we want to put into this. So in this case, this was a um, activity where I wanted the students to drag and drop some uh, clip art into these boxes based upon whether it was a short A or a long A word in this case. So this direction, I've already recorded these. Uh, if you want to hear them, um, they're already in the, uh, in the sample uh, slideshow. But these directions here basically tell them to drag uh, the pictures with the short A sound into this box. Now, how can I do that though with Moat very easily? All I have to do is click on the little Moat button above the slideshow and click and record. Let's try it out. Drag the pictures here that have the short A sound. The short A sound goes ah. There we go, very simple. And now watch what happens when I click insert. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that, it's going to save that to my drive, share it, and insert it right into the slideshow. And boom, there it is. Now, again, I already had these in from earlier, but that's the same idea. So I can get rid of that one and I can put this one over in its place. And so now when the student goes into the slideshow to do this activity, they can hover above there, hit the play button, drag the pictures here that have the short A sound. The short A sound goes ah. And because this is using the audio feature that's built into Google Slides, they will see this button and be able to play it regardless of if they have the Moat extension installed or not. So this is a really neat thing because this is piggybacking onto the audio feature that's built right into Slides. And so everybody can see the little button and everybody can click it from there. Uh, in this case, I've used it to provide some directions. And then over here, I used it to record the different uh, audio for the different pictures. So like here, we've got... Uh, Rain. Rain. Here we should have hat. Let's see. And hat. there we go. So to create um, activities where we're providing audio directions or we're providing audio as part of the activity, super simple to be able to do this inside of a Google slideshow. Now, again, that's an example of us doing it as a teacher. So I'm doing it. I'm adding the audio in as a teacher. Um, 
How about our students doing the same thing? Absolutely. So this is a great way for students to put their voice onto a slide as a way of explaining something, whether they're explaining how they solved a problem or they're reading something they've written. Um, they're you know, putting something into their own words. Basically, they're adding their voice uh, to a slideshow. Now, a fun uh, example for this, uh, if you want to try this out. Um, so uh, page, uh, we're on page five of our agenda document. Uh, you'll see I've got a, a sample one that you can try out if you want to, which is the build a jack-o-lantern uh, example. Uh, this was a uh, slideshow I did for the Halloween time uh, where students can build their own jack-o-lantern. And then we could use Moat to uh, add our voice into that. Now, again, you don't have to click on all of this, but if you do give a click on it, it will make a copy of that uh, template and you can see the idea behind it. We won't go through the process of, of you know, building a, a fancy jack-o'-lantern here. I'll just show you the ideas that are in here. Basically what happens is the students get a slide where they've got a, uh, a blank pumpkin and then they've got slides where they can copy eyes and they can copy mouths and they can copy arms and feet and hats and all kinds of stuff. And so what they're doing is they're coming in and they're finding, you know, eyes that they like and they're copying and they're pasting and they're dragging and dropping them onto their pumpkin. Then they're finding a cool mouth that they like and they're copying and pasting that onto their pumpkin. And little by little, they do this until they have created their jack-o'-lantern. They write about their jack-o'-lantern over here, but then they could simply click on the moat button above Above, and they could record themselves reading their story. Now, I went ahead and did this ahead of time. So if you want to see the final version of it, I do have a completed example that is linked below there, but I've also embedded it right into our slideshow here. <laughs> so this makes it even faster. So here is my final example uh, where I created my, uh, my, my pirate uh, a jack o' lantern here, and then I used the moat button to record myself. So let's give a click and listen to that. My jack-o'-lantern is a pirate pumpkin. He is going to go out on Halloween to get lots of candy, and he will store it all in his treasure chest. But he is not selfish and will share his candy with his friends. Awesome. And then over here, I recorded a little, uh, little sound effect for him. Our matey. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. So great, uh, great tool inside of Google Slides makes it very easy for you as a teacher to be able to add uh, either voice comments to a slideshow or to put audio support right into it. But also what a wonderful way for our students to be able to put their own voice into a slideshow. All right. Let's keep on going. So we have seen, um, I'll clean up my tabs again, <laughs> get too many going here. We've seen moat being used inside of docs and slides. We got to keep on moving because we want to see some more examples here. And so next we're going to jump over to Google Forms. Now with Google Forms, uh, moat is a wonderful way to be able to add audio in a bunch of different places. We can add audio as part of the question. If we want to have the question read aloud to the student, we can have audio in the question if, again, we want them to be able to like spell a word um, and we don't want to actually have the word typed out. Um, we can also use Moat to add audio to the answers so they can hear each of the answers being read aloud. And Moat can be used for students to add audio to their response so they can record their own voice. Let's do all of those. Let's take a look at each one of those examples. So I'm going to go back over to our agenda document, and we are now at the bottom of page four. Five. So if you're following along, bottom of page five, and I'm going to use the same form for all of these. So we won't have a separate form for each example. It's just one form that I'll use for all of them. So here's a link to a sample form for testing. We'll give a click on that and give that a moment to make a copy. And that should pop up here pretty quick. There we go. So here is our Google form. And what we want to do is show how we can add moot in in different spots along this form. So one of the first things we're going to do is let's say we just want to add a recording of our voice to read the question aloud to the students. So here I've got uh, my question about an angle with a measure between zero and 90. Let's say I wanted to have audio so the students could hear that being read aloud rather than just reading the question in the form. Well, all I have to do is click on that question and you'll see right below there's a little M, a little purple M there for moat. I can give a click on that to start recording and then click again to stop. Let's try it out. An angle with a measure between zero and 90 degrees is called what? 
And there it is. I just recorded that. And now you can see that is underneath the recording there. Click on play and it'll play back that recording for us. Same idea could be used again if this was like a spelling test. You know, I could say spell the word in the recording below. And instead of reading that, I could record what the word is I want them to spell. So we'll just do the same dinosaur example we did from earlier. We'll click on moat here and we'll try that out. Dinosaur. I saw a dinosaur fossil at the museum. Dinosaur. And there we go. And so now, when they come here, they'll be able to click on that. Dinosaur. I saw a dinosaur fossil at the museum. And they'd be able to then type in their response. I think I've already set up the answer key here to expect dinosaur as, as the response there. So we can use Moat to put a recording to read the question aloud or to have audio that goes along with the question. We also, though, can use Moat to add audio to the answers. In this case, Let's say I want them to choose the correct German pronunciation for I am a man. And I want to give three different recordings here so they can hear those and decide which is the correct one. Now, this is going to be a little bit different. So we aren't going to click the little moat button below because that's to record our voice for the question, not for the options. We're going to do something different this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the moat extension. So remember I said it's good to to have the extension pinned. If you didn't pin the extension, now's a good time to do that. Go up to the little puzzle piece, make sure you've pinned the moat extension so you can find it quickly. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to click on the moat extension. And notice when we do that, we get um, a little moat icon up here that says record a voice uh, a moat voice note. Uh, if we click on that, it will record a moat for us, but it's not going to be attached to anything in particular. It's just going to record it and save it and give us a link to it. And then we can use that link in all sorts of uses. In this case, we're going to use it for our answers in the form. So when we do this, uh, this is usually referred to as the moat pad. So we're going to be recording um, a, a um, a moat pad recording, and then we can take that uh, that link and we can put it in the form. But we really could put it anywhere, anywhere that you there's a text box <laughs> online that you can put it. It's it's very easy to then just take that copied link and put it. So let's let's try that out. So we need to give uh, the German pronunciation for I'm a man. So let's go ahead and click to record this. Ich bin ein Mann. And there we go. As simple as that. It recorded it and it copied it. I can now come here and let's say we make that option two. Maybe that'll be, you know, the second choice. So we'll put that in. And then, of course, we'll need some, you know, distractors. So we'll go back up and we'll do this again and we'll record some incorrect ones. Uh, let's try another one. Sie sind ein Mann. And then we'll paste that one in and then we'll do one more here. Area Steinmann, and we'll put that in. And there we go. And so now what's going to happen is there's going to be these recordings underneath each one of these. And when the student goes to take the quiz, Ich bin ein Mann. They can click these. Sie sind ein Mann. And they'll be able to hear each of those. Awesome. So we can add moat uh, recordings to the questions. We can also add moat recordings to the options. And our students can add moat recordings to their responses. So let me go ahead and actually take the quiz now. I'll go up to the preview button to take the quiz and we'll come in and I'll put in my email address here and I'll come down and I'll say, okay, I could, again, we don't need to play these, but I could play this. I could listen to the question. I could listen to uh, this telling me to spell the word below, which we know was dinosaur. I could listen to each of the pronunciations of I am a man, choose the correct one. And then here where it says explain in your own words how to find the perimeter of a rectangle, notice when the student clicks in that box, they have a little moat icon. Again, if they have moat installed and they could record themselves. So this would be great if it's something where you're wanting the students to have another option to express themselves, to explain an answer. Um, or again, if it is something where you're wanting them to practice fluency, for example. Let's just do a quick recording here to explain how to find the perimeter of a rectangle. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, you would add up each of the four sides. And there we go.
Now they can listen to it if they want to, but uh, I'm sure that was good. We'll go ahead and click submit and submit that in. Now, let me show you what that looks like from the teacher's point of view. So now if I pop back over to being the teacher, if I go to my responses, of course, you know, it's going to auto grade and I can see how they did on each of the questions. Well, the question of the where they recorded their voice, it's not going to auto grade that because, you know, you're going to have to listen to the question. Well, if you come in here, the problem is um, you're not going to be able to just click right here and play it. It's it recorded that mode. What you're going to want to do is from the responses tab, you're actually going to want to go all the way up to the top of the responses tab. And over on the right, there's a little icon to create a spreadsheet. So anytime you have a Google form, you can link a spreadsheet to it. That's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to go up here and click on create spreadsheet. Let it create the spreadsheet because that's where you're going to be able to play the moats really simple. So what you're going to get is all of your students' responses here from the quiz, and all you need to do is come over here and just simply hover above the moat links, and look at this. I can hit play. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, you would add up each of the four sides. And as simple as that, I can go down the list, boom, 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 click on all their little moat uh, uh, links there, or click, hover above the moat links and click the play button, and I can listen to all of my students' responses. So fantastic stuff. All right, good deal. Let's go ahead and keep on moving, guys. We are doing a great job here, but we do want to take a look at a few more things. Okay, so we have seen moat in docs. We've seen moat in slides. We've seen moat in forms. How about moat in Google Classroom? Now, we won't spend a whole lot of time on moat in Google Classroom, but I do want to demonstrate the idea uh, behind this, and that is anywhere where there's a text box, a spot, a comment box, uh, some place where you can normally type in text, you can use Moat to record yourself. So this could be in the stream, this could be um, on a class assignment, this could be a private comment on student work. Let's try this out. So let me go ahead and go to Google Classroom. And I have a class that I set up a demo class with my demo pretend students in there. So I'm going to jump over here and open up this uh, moot demo class here and just show you the ideas behind this. So for example, if I wanted to put something in the stream, I could click here to announce something in the stream and I could click on the moot button to record myself giving a, you know, an announcement to the students. In this case, we'll just welcome them to the class. Let's try this out. Oh, got to give it permission here. There we go. Welcome to the class, everyone. I look forward to learning with you. And there we go. And I could post that out to the class. And welcome to the class, everyone. I look forward to learning with you. Simple as that. I've got that recording in there. Same thing if I go to classwork. I could go to classwork and I could open up an assignment. And if I go into an assignment here, I could, from the assignment, go to the instructions tab, and I could leave a class comment if I wanted to give some additional uh, audio support for an assignment here. So if I come here to the class comment and click on the moat button, for this assignment, choose a famous person you would like to write about, and then write your report in the Google Doc that has been pushed out to you. And there we go. Post that, and now that's been added. And then if I go into my student's work, let's grab demo student three, since that was the student that uh, we were uh, using earlier, I could pull up their report. And um, I could, of course, we know we can leave, you know, feedback in the document, but I can also come over here and use the private comments feature in Google Classroom and using the moat button, I could provide some feedback specifically to that student there. Let's try that out. Hey, demo student, take a look at anything in your document that has a red squiggly line under it, as those would be spelling or grammar issues that need to be fixed. And there we go. Now, when the student comes in, so we'll pull our demo student back up, and they come here to their classwork, they can uh, come in here to uh, view the assignment. And they would be able to see, for example, that I have left some, uh, you know, uh, moat notes for them in here. Um, and in, the, in each of these cases here, we can come in and be able to listen to those. Hey, demo student. And actually, I'll have to just refresh the page and they will play without me. They should play without me having to click. There it is. 
don't forget to, to refresh the page <laughs> if it doesn't show up. And so here you can see them all playable. So I can come in here and very quickly. Hey, demo student, take a look at anything in your document that has a red screen. And notice the students also uh, here have a little option to give some uh, feedback as well. Uh, thumbs up or, hey, I may need some help type of feedback after they have listened to those. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, let's keep on going here. Clean up a few of my tabs again here as, as we head through this. Awesome. Well, at this point, we have seen a lot of examples of how Moat can be used, and I have not covered all of them. Moat can be used in more things than just docs, slides, forms, and classroom, but those are some of the big ones. And I wanted to show you examples from each of those. Let's cover a couple other things, though, because there's a few critical things I still want to get to in the time, and we're down to about mm, 10 or 12 minutes, and I want to make sure that we get as much of this in as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and talk real quick about viewing activity. And so the idea is that as you're creating these moats and you're recording them, moat also tracks whether or not they're being listened to. Um, and you can get to this by going up to your moat extension. And so I'm going to come up here to my moat extension, give a click on that. And from that uh, drop down in the moat extension, you'll see one of the uh, options says my activity and engagement. And when you click on that, that's going to open up a screen where you can see all of the moats that you have recorded. You can play them back. You can click on the little three dots and download them if you'd like to download a copy of them. You can also come over here and see, for example, have the moats been viewed? Have they been listened to? Was there feedback from the students? In this case, I can see the demo student one has interacted with my moat. I can also click to see the original context where that moat was, that recording was left. And so that will open up a, the page where you originally recorded that and allow you to see where that was at. So really nice to be able to quickly go in and monitor those. Uh, and you can even come over here and filter by, uh, I wanna see just the moats that have been interacted with, or I want to see the modes that have not been interacted with yet as well. So very nice uh, to have that quick access there. Next up, what I'd like to do is talk about some of the things that would be included in the unlimited version, the premium version of the uh, of the Moat tool. So everything we've seen so far, these are all uh, tools or features that are just part of the free version. And I think that's fantastic. A big shout out to Moat uh, as a company for, for providing such a feature rich tool um, that uh, for free you can use and really make a big difference. Having said that. They do offer the unlimited version that allows you to uh, record for up to three minutes at a time and have an unlimited amount of recordings per month. But it also picks up a couple other features like transcription, translation, the moat book, um, and a few other tools beyond that. But I'm going to hit a couple of the key ones here. So one of the key ones is transcription. And so the idea behind this is if you turn on transcription in the unlimited version of moat, when you record a moat, it will also then transcribe it for you. So not only can the student listen to the moat, but they can see the text of it as well. Let me demonstrate that for you real quick here. So let's say I wanted to talk again about, you know, the spelling errors that my students have been having. I can, oh, I got to turn it on first. See, I always forget about that. <laughs> if I go up, because I had it turned off earlier because I was demonstrating the free version. So I'm going to come up here to my moat extension and I'm going to go to settings and underneath settings, there's the little switch I need to flip that says an enable voice to text. So I'm going to turn that on. And so now that it's turned on, it will transcribe uh, these as I go. Okay, so with that turned on, let's go ahead and I will select uh, my text. I'll come over here to add a comment and I will click on note to record that. When you look through your Google Doc, anything with a red line under it means that it is a misspelled word. Now, it will take it a moment to process that, but what's going to happen now is underneath my recording, and here's the normal recording, you can hit play and play it just like normal, but underneath that recording, it's going to pop up with uh, a transcription of that as well. And 
there it is. Didn't take too long. I mean, what was that? Maybe 15 seconds or so. So now underneath there, if you click, you can see here is the transcription. It does a really nice job. If it doesn't, if for any reason something's a little bit off with it, that's okay. You can just click on the little three dots button, the little purple three dots button here, and you can click edit, and that will let you go in and edit that transcription. So like if I wanted to can you look Oops. through your Google Pause Doc? That it starts to play automatically. Like if I wanted to capitalize the word doc, you know, for, for Google Doc. And then I could hit save and it will go ahead and update that over here. So transcription is one of the unlimited features. Um, another unlimited feature is translation. And so with translation, um, if you've got the transcription turned on after you have done the recording and it has transcribed it, you can also go in and um, translate it and have it translated into another language. So it's going to have your voice recorded in however you spoke it, but it would add the translated text to it as a support for students that would benefit from that. So let's go back in and we'll try another one of these here. Let's say maybe we're going to grab a, a verb tense issue here. We'll come in and we'll record the moat first. So let's click on this and record this. Be careful which verb tense you use. For example, this word should be in the past tense. So we'll let that do its thing. And uh, so it's recorded, it's, it has already recorded the moat, but we're gonna let it take a moment here and do the transcription. And once that appears, we're gonna go back into that edit that we saw earlier. We'll click on the little purple three dots. There we go. So here is, there's the uh, transcription. We're gonna click on the three dots, the purple three dots, and we're gonna go into edit. But this time when we go into edit, be careful which we're going to click on the translate button here when i click on the translate button it's going to give me the different languages that i can choose from i'll just choose spanish it'll translate that and of course i can edit it if it wasn't perfect i could fix that as needed but as long as that's good i can just go ahead and click on save and now they're going to have it playing back my audio the way it was recorded but now there is a translation of the transcription below it and then the last unlimited feature I'm going to mention, there are, there are more things, but the last one I'm going to mention is the moat book. And so the moat book is the option to save some of your most commonly used moat voice recordings so that you can very easily drop them back in later. So the way this works is let's go back over here and let's say I wanted to save this one. So we'll come to this one here about um, the misspelled words. Well, because I've already recorded this and I've got it, what I can do is I can click on the little three dots purple button to go back into edit mode. And then from here, what I'll do is I'm going to click on the save as button because I want to save this moat recording to my moat book. So if I click save as, what I can do now is I can give it a title. I can name what I want to call. I'll just call it misspelled words. I'll go ahead and hit save. And now that I've done that, this is now available anytime I want to use it. How would I do it? So what I would do is I'd come back in and I'd find another spot where I want to leave this comment, come over here to click to add my comment. But instead of clicking on the moat like I normally do, just a quick click and recording, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a long press. I'm going to click and hold down on the moat icon. And if I do that, it pops up my moat book, which will list all of the ones I've got saved. I've only got one example saved, but it would list all of my saved moats. I'll click on misspelled words. And boom, it adds it in. I hit comment. And as simple as that, I've been able to reuse that anywhere that I want to. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, we're down to our last couple of minutes here. And so I do want to wrap up with a couple of final resources here, including how you can get a certificate of attendance for this session and also how you can get uh, the unlimited version of Moat for free through the end of June, thanks to, uh, to Moat providing that for people who watched this uh, training today. However, do want to talk about a couple of quick resources as we start to wrap up. First of all, I want you to know I did not get to everything <laughs> that Moat does. There's a lot of other neat things they've added recently, like the ability to record Moats, to add them to PDFs and images in Google Drive, to embed Moats into Google Sites, to create QR codes. All of these things that they're constantly creating can be found um, through a lot of their support resources, such as their Moat YouTube channel. Um, I have at the very top of the agenda document, um, a section called resources. 
And so if you are in the agenda document still and you go to the top of page two, you'll see we've got things such as the Moat YouTube channel where you can find all these quick, easy to follow uh, uh, videos that show you all the new features. They've also got their community site, an awesome Facebook group, their, their Twitter account. If you wanna go deeper though, you can also become a Moat certified educator or a Moat ambassador. And there are links to those as well. And uh, we do want to talk about getting the uh, certificate. And so I'm going to pull that over. Give me a second to bring all of this stuff over. So I'm going to drag this over onto the screen. So two key links I want to give you here uh, at the end. And I'll drop these into the chat as well to make things a little bit easier for you here. Let me copy and paste this into the chat. Uh, so the first one I want to do is give you the link for unlimited moat. There we go. I'm dropping that into the chat right now. So if you would like to try out the full unlimited version for free through the end of June, go to bit.ly slash kurtzxmoat. That'll take you to a Google form you can fill out and be able to get upgraded so you can try out the unlimited version through the end of June. And then the next thing that I want to uh, tell you about is if you want to get a certificate of attendance for this session, uh, for that, what you're going to do is you're going to go to bit.ly slash tech int dash cert. That's tech integration uh, uh, dash cert, like, like certificate. That takes you to a Google form where you can fill in uh, your key information. And we have a code for each session to, you know, to prove you really did watch the session. And so this is uh, 375. There's nothing. No, there's nothing special about that. That just is the random code for this session. But if you follow that link, bit.ly slash techint dash cert, that'll take you to the Google form where you'll fill in your contact information, fill in the code, um, and you can give an evaluation and some feedback on the session as well if you would like to. Um, and that will then auto-generate a certificate of attendance for you uh, after that. And again, as we've mentioned uh, a couple of times, everything from this session uh, can be found uh, at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash moat. I know we are at the end of our hour. I'm going to pause for a moment, though, and take a look to see if there's any uh, questions that I can address from the chat. But I also want to be respectful of your time. So I will officially, uh, you know, pull the session to a close here at the hour. And thank you guys so, so, so very much for taking time to uh, be a part of this today. I'm going to take a look through and see if there's anything else. Else, uh, that uh, we can address really quick. And if I missed something, please feel free to throw that back into the chat. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of great comments in there, and that is fantastic. I'm glad uh, this was valuable for you guys. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Awesome. Well, um, my hope is to continue with these uh, webinars. Um, I, in the past, I had done uh, these quite often uh, and uh, uh, have taken a couple of different directions and done some different things. And so I think um, uh, we'll, we'll continue to uh, offer these type of uh, webinars, um, uh, maybe once a month or so. So thank you guys so much again for being a part of this today. Um, oh, I did see one other question pop in. I uh, said, if I record 20 moats with the free version and then 20 more in the next month, can the students access all 40? Yes. Yeah. It's just the only limit is on the recording of the moats, not the playing back of the moats. So yeah, it would be 20 moats per month in the free version, but as far as playing them back, no problem at all with that. Um, then I see a question about in classroom, can a student use moat to respond to a question if the teacher posts one in classwork? Um, I, I, that's a good question. Now I have not tried that. I know what you mean by if you have in Google classroom and I don't have classroom open at the moment. Sorry about that. But in classroom, if you add a, a question, can they use that to respond? My gut feeling is yes, as long as there's a normal text box that you can type in, you should get the little moat icon and the students can uh, record their voice uh, there as well. Good, good stuff. Well, guys, thanks again so much. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Um, and uh, keep in mind that this uh, is also being recorded. So if you do need to get back to this uh, video in the future, the same link will get you back in and feel free to share it with other folks. Um, and uh, thanks again so very much. Take care, everybody. <laughs>